Good evening everybody, welcome to Let's Talk Assassin's Creed, your number one podcast for all things Assassin's Creed. So at the time of recording, Halloween's coming up, and I hope to have this episode out on Halloween. So what's the best way to celebrate Halloween than actually making a Halloween podcast? Now, disclaimer, there is not going to be too much lore in this episode, this is just purely fun, speculation, and have some giggles for Halloween on what Halloween we could see in the games. I'm not alone, we are joined by Trickster from the AC Sisterhood server, which is one of the greatest communities I have been part of, and proud to support the Sisterhood as much as I can. Trickster, you still there? Oh, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, I, I thought I was supposed to wait for permission to speak. <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I need a button for permission to talk? Yes, um, push, push to talk. No, wait, that's a Discord thing. Um, <laughs> sorry, um, but... This is okay. Um, I'm very sorry in advance because this is the first time I've ever done or been on anything like this, and I'm incredibly nervous. But um, I've been, I've been, you know, reassured that this is fun and for the giggles. So yeah. Well, regular view- listeners, I keep saying viewers. Regular listeners of the show will know by now that a lot of my episodes are done serious to the law. But there's always light-hearted theories involved. And I think only two times a year we can be not so serious will be Christmas and Halloween. And, well, it's Halloween, so let's just not be as serious? You know, Headless Horseman in Assassin's Creed, that's not serious. Yeah, like, in, in Rogue you get to, like, deck the Headless Horseman, don't you? <laughs> exactly! <laughs> Name me one person who's literally walked up to a headless horseman and decked him. Like, that doesn't happen in life. I'm not going to stroll down to my local park and punch a headless horseman. <laughs> like, you, you, the way you say it implies that headless horsemen are just a common occurrence. Like, you see a, <laughs> like, like, you just see a headless horseman in, like, a Denny's parking lot, and you say, you know what? I'm going to punch it. <laughs> <laughs> see it every day. It doesn't fuss me. <laughs> All right, mate. Go back to your duties. <laughs> But it's it's these sort of things, like Halloween is unique, it's special, and it has tons of folklore that is in our world. And it's in Assassin's Creed with the Headless Horseman. A really cool one someone told me on Twitter a while ago, so I'll give them a shout out, is there's a DLC for two, um, where you visit Vlad the Impaler, who was a Templar, but Easter Egg, he has fangs in his grave. Oh, that's and interesting. So are you trying to tell me, Assassin's Creed, that Dracula was a Templar? Not the man, the Dracula. The Batman. Okay, vampires. <laughs> the Batman? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Seriously, vampires are just Batmen. Like, come on, someone can't disagree with me. It's Batman. It's a man that turned into a bat. You know what? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it's really fun because like I don't know the way Templars are not Templars uh, vampires are usually characterized in media like they're very highly organized and sophisticated and they're kind of you know they represent the elite and um, I'm sorry am I cutting off of any points you were gonna make or no keep going this okay is um, vampires um, they're typically like when they're when Bram's Bram, I don't know if it's Bram Stoker but the writer of Dracula. Um, had in mind for vampires there and you know other writers centering around vampires they vampires are kind of um like satire or representation of the elite of the elite class around those times where they're usually literally you know feeding off the poor and preying off of and manipulating people and you know there's like a literary definition and a literary kind of um connotation with vampires and um using people and i feel like and you know the way they're you know organized and they're elite and they you know um they do whatever they think it takes necessary to get to an end result i think the templars you know what there would be vampire templars well damn so the possibility of dracula the dracula who drinks blood for a living could be a Templar. Yeah, Revelation he people. Ate babies? <laughs> I don't I don't know if he ate babies or not, but if he ate babies, I'm not surprised. <laughs> could you could you imagine though, like Ezio stroll into Vlad the Impaler's castle, expecting just to stab Dracula with a hidden blade, like, eh, done, easy Templar, and he just rises back up like, nah man, 
You need a stake in the heart, not a pisky blade. <laughs> yeah, like, like he, he actually he actually tells that to you. This like, like no, you fool. Metal doesn't do anything to me. You have to drive a wooden stake through the heart and. Ezio just like pulls out a shard of wood from the floor, like <laughs> okay, <laughs> done. <Floor somewhere>. Finished. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think I would really play an Assassin's Creed DLC if it went off the beaten path and we fought Dracula. I, I don't, I don't expect a big, flashy mythical fight like Odyssey, but just something fighting Dracula in a sword battle, you know, and then stabbing him once and he gets back up. Like, nah, man. Stick in the heart, and like you just said, a quick time event where you just pick a piece of wall pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Better. you just pick up a piece of wall <laughs> That is, that would be very, very fun. Um, but also, like, if you do want to do, like, an off the walls Odyssey style thing, have him, like, turn to a bat or whatever, but, like, in the middle that of fight, just turns to a bat, and Ezio's like, what the heck? <laughs> um, so, moving on to a different game that we we've dis- we did say Headless Horseman's in free and rogue, but there's a gap. Assassin's Creed Black Flag has HMS Prince, which is nicknamed the Ghost Ship, but it doesn't actually have any ghost ships in the game. There's no skeleton pirates, there's no Pirates of the Caribbean style Black Pearl fights. It's just a missed opportunity in my eyes. <laughs> that would be very, very fun actually i haven't played black flag yet but you know what if if you get to like beat a bunch of skeleton things that'd be fun um oh. yeah and right. as, oh sorry you go you go first <laughs> sorry my mic was cut for a second um, i was just gonna say like uh, my mic was cutting out that's all i was trying to say it's okay take your time um oh i actually had an idea kind of so shoot um, there you go fix my mic sorry guys <laughs> it's okay um so, um, beyond just, like, you know, fighting, like, ghost pirate ships, I'm wondering the possibility of, you know, just, like, a fun monster, monster hunting or monster fight type thing with, um, aquatic creatures. Like, um, there's, you know, everyone knows the Kraken already, but there's actually different other, um, like, marine monsters around the Caribbean, actually. Like, I don't really know anything off the top of my head, but there's, you know, there's other variations of these kinds of, you know, shipwrecking beasts um, throughout the world. And, you know, just like, like bumping into one by accident or like, there's like, you know, re- records of, you know, like this going wrong. And then so Edward goes to investigate and you have to fight a thing. I think it'd be cool to see, um, on, on about shipwrecking creatures and, you know, maybe take thatch on a little journey bump into some sirens and thatch is probably like more ladies and his ship gets sunk <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like a like like the odyssey like like homer's iliad odyssey or whatever <laughs> a little bit like you know like you, like you go on a ship and you do sea stuff and then like bad thing happens one after another you see a bunch of you know you meet a bunch of stuff <laughs> stuff yeah, just, i think <laughs> I think in Black Flag, I think I would have loved the hell out of just sailing randomly through the Caribbean and just having Adewale just shout and um, release the Kraken and then the Kraken just appears. <laughs> <laughs> that, would be that would be amazing. Um, also, um, d- I'm, I'm wondering, did Black Flag do anything with the Bermuda Triangle? or Not that I'm aware. I really think... Um, Black Flag was very grounded. From a lot of research I've done, Black Flag was kind of grounded in the pirate style. You know, there was the Mayan armor from the Isu, but it wasn't really much supernatural, Bermuda Triangle, Sirens, Kraken sort of things going on. Mm. Yeah, so, um, like, for, you know, the fun the fun Halloween DLC ideas. Like, I yes, don't know, is that what we're going to call it? <laughs> but, you yeah. know, yeah. Maybe, you know, like, like go to the Bermuda Triangle, and no one knows what's really there, and, I don't know, he can fight off the coconut crabs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's this whole thing where it's like, you know, um, oh, uh, the, the aviator, um, I feel so bad that I forgot her name, hang on, what's the aviator's name who flew over to the B- Bermuda Triangle and never came out? Oh, oh, I think I know who you mean now. The one that was meant to sail around, Amelia, Amelia Amelia Earhart. Earhart. 
Yes. Yeah, like, um, there's this theory, this real life theory that Amelia Earhart, like, even if she did die on the Bermuda Triangle, her remains wouldn't be found because coconut crabs would have gotten to her bones and stuff. Well, yeah, and that if went you... from pleasant to morbid. Yeah, um, Google coconut crabs. <laughs> I'm terrified to. <laughs> yeah, can you open like another tab and look up coconut crabs because they are huge? Imagine Edward fighting off like five of these, but make them human sized. Right. Okay. I can't spell coke. Wait. I got it. I got it. I want to see these coconut crabs, guys. Yeah. This, this sound terrifying. You know, Edward fighting a coconut crab. Like, holy heck! <laughs> you see That's the picture terrifying. of the trash can. <laughs> That's terrifying. Like, I, I wouldn't know what to do if I was sailing through Black Flag and just saw a coconut crab land on my ship. I don't know if I would turn the game off in shock or <laughs> stay on my ship the other way. But those things are terrifying. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, uh, think... so he goes to investigate what's on Bermuda, Ber the Bermuda Triangle, and I don't know, maybe it's misty and there's like stuff affecting your gravity because there's like weird electromagnetic poles there i guess i don't know like so it's just messing with edward big time and then suddenly coconut crab i think the more i think about to top this all off pirates are known for drinking just imagine edward absolutely hammered <laughs> failing through the bermuda triangle. god dang it it's just crabs now yeah yeah, um, this I don't even know if this is like a Halloween thing. We're just going like Ghost is closer to more Halloween ish, Halloween y type thing. But now we're just talking about like crabs, or should we make crabs a staple of Halloween now? <laughs> I, I think Halloween's defined by terrifying monsters. You get Frankenstein, you get werewolves, you get headless horsemen, mm -hmm. you get ghosts, and we'll just throw in Bermuda Triangle coconut crabs because why not? Yeah, it's just. Just giant, the giant coconut crabs that ate Amelia Earhart like two hundred years later. Yeah, we'll we'll go off that. <laughs> <laughs> so Edward was lucky to get out of there. This is kind of turning. To... <laughs> it, it just seems this is turning into a wacky episode, to be honest. But Halloween. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, so like the other just, game. No more inhibitions. Uh, so what, what's the other game you want to tackle? Unity. I'm trying to think about Unity. If Unity had any, oh. I think the only creepy Beast Halloween of Givardon. Thing. Ooh, was that in Unity? Um, easy. Like it's it's a, it's a French. It's a really known, well known no. French folk tale, um, around the 18th century, I believe, about um the Beast of Givardon, who is basically a um werewolf. So I have the thing pulled up. You had me sold a werewolf. Yeah, um You had I, sold it well. Yeah, um I have I have some stuff to tie in. Um werewolves with, you know, like um Syndicate, Unity, and possibly A C three, but I gotta, you know, um fact check it some more. But um okay, I'm reading off of this website called VictorianPhantoms.com and it, it briefly explains, you know, the history of where of you know like at least this thing i'm looking at right now it explains the history of werewolves throughout different cultures and stuff and i'm just gonna read off of there if that's all right unless that's gonna get this taken down or copyrighted or i don't know no uh, just send me the link lately and i'll just put it in the description we won't get in trouble that way all right um but so i'm not interested yeah um but it describes that um France in particular has a a pretty long history of werewolves since the 16th century and there were actually lots of real life trials like you know um you saw this in the Salem witch trials as well in um and you know new you know like when people started coming over to America there's you know accusations of people not just being witches but also werewolves and people would kind of point out certain things like, oh, you got hair on your hands, or you got hair between your eyebrows, or you were born on the full moon, or whatever. And, you know, just little superstitious stuff like that that got a that caused a bunch of unnecessary deaths. But, um, so, you know, France was kind of rife with that. And there's, you know, this kind of ly lycanthropy fever that was um, evident in lo a lot of European countries, especially during this kind of time. But there's um, a story in particular um, I can't pronounce it for the life of me, so forgive me, but it's like Beast of Givaudon or Givaudon, French people who are listening, I'm so sorry. But um 
but between 1764 and 1767, it's the name of a um, man-eating animal that terrorized um, a French French province for a long time. And there's this whole story that it was actually this, you know, nobleman who had who was cursed to, you know, every full new moon he turned into a werewolf, but he st- he would hide his clothing in a safe place. And so when sun rose again, he could just put on the clothing and he would turn back into a human. And his wife found out and out of fear for some reason, I'm not I'm sure about her reason about this, but she hid his clothes so he couldn't turn back into a human and then he bit her nose off and the beast just started running around. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, it's just funny how Assassin's Creed Unity actually takes place in... 18th century France. Yeah. I am now wishing we had a supernatural DLC where Anna runs into a werewolf. Because please, that would have been freaky. Yeah, weird. it would have been. It would have been cool worse. if it actually is the beast of Givaudan. Like maybe he has to go to the the province of Givaudan somewhere, somewhere, and you know, there's a beast terrorizing it, and he finds out the story of it and the fact that you know his clothes are lost. So he actually has to go on like a like a hunt. And look through, you know, the old manor the person may have lived in to find the clothes and and try to confront the werewolf and try to bring him down, you know, not like without killing him. I think what would have been cool as well is like <clears throat> a lot of this stuff do sound far fetched, but you could make them quite grounded. So with Unity, you could have gone through uh, the mansion looking for the clothes and hear a wolf stalking you, but Ooh. it turns out it's not a werewolf but an actual wolf. So you think you're hunting down a werewolf, you're hunting down a real wolf, oh, and the I like man's that. just gone missing. Oh yeah, I really like that. That's actually very, very smart. It's um, It reminds me a lot of what the supernatural stuff in AC3 entailed, where, you know, there's like this supernatural thing, they tell Connor to go investigate, and it turns out it's just a, a regular thing, like the lighthouse ghost. Or Big yeah, see, Foot. Bigfoot is just a big hairy man. What if, what if the beast uh, in the French thing is actually just a big hairy man? <laughs> well, I did a lot of studying as a kid um, into Supernatural because it's something I'm quite keen about. And a lot of Supernatural stories for like werewolves and vampires is based off actual human biology. There is a rare skin condition that makes you allergic to sunlight and the vitamin D. Mm-hmm. So... A lot of stuff like that could have inspired well, uh, vampirism. There is people out there now who have hormones that make them super hairy, which means yeah. like werewolves. So yeah. a lot of the stuff we're talking about for Halloween does sound far-fetched, but you could... You know, Vlad the Impaler could have been allergic to sunlight, which would have given him his unnaturally white appearance and never coming out in daylight. Well, was drinking blood and eating babies necessary? Uh, <laughs> History. I'm just going to say history. I've not studied Vlad the Impaler since Dracula times. I'm just going to say history. It's, it's it, okay. Um, it, yeah, it's but, history. But I, I really love, you know, um, like these kind of myths that are kind of misconstrued, I guess, from real life facts. Because there's a lot of descriptions of vampires being, you know, pale and bloated and sickly as well. And But it's, you know, describing the processes of a corpse deteriorating. So, you know, there could have been like... um. So, you know, when you open up a coffin and you saw that, how, you know, it kind of kind of um, warped from the original corpse that was buried there, they would think, ah, oh, vampire, but no, it's just like, you know, the natural process of a human body decaying. And there is a lot of stuff in the history of people's bodies being preserved immaculately. You know, yeah. seeing that for the first time, like, that thing is not natural, that shouldn't be alive. And jump into syndicate which is in victorian times it was very common in victorian times for people to be buried alive it was very common so the idea of zombies in syndicate isn't too far-fetched zombies in syndicate i like that a lot um i was i was just going to continue my werewolf thing in a syndicate but i want to listen to the zombie thing (laughs) i i I love werewolves i'm so so werewolves i'm sorry (laughs) werewolves in syndicate could work like I think Syndicate's the best one to end this on, because Origins and Odyssey's more mythological side, so I'm going to leave them out, but I think Syndicate's the best one to look at for Halloween, because they had Springheel Jack, and Springheel Jack is a legit folklore in human history. In English history, I've read it, it's 
kind of intriguing. But Spring Hill Jack's never killed anyone. It's just a weird story of a man that jumps around with glowing red eyes. He's like a demon. Yeah, um, there are versions that said like he's like a kind of like like an extension of the devil or something like that. He could spit blue flame or something like that. I, I'm not sure why I read that, but but um, there are some versions and accounts that say you know he might have been like you know the devil himself, but just kind of having fun, just doing whatever, going boing 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 around the town. <laughs> Just chilling, you know, like, you know what, I'm bored, I'm gonna go off for some London booze. Yeah, I'm just like, like get up drunk up. off of um the, the big bastard, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, Spring Hill Jack was a cult leader in the um, Jack the Ripper DLC, and oh. um, you do actually fight Spring Hill Jack, which is kind of cool, and I think this is where, like, I really get the ha- idea for Halloween, so werewolves in London, such a miss used Easter egg for Syndicate because Werewolf in London is a really cult classic werewolf movie. Yeah, it's, it's actually one of my favourite movies of all time. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't have to be a legit man werewolf, you know, just clues of a werewolf in London. I know yeah. the time zones are a bit out, but I would have loved this, just chilling around and everyone's screaming werewolf and there's nothing really there. Yeah, um, that actually reminds me, okay, I'm just going to squeeze this in really quick, but around the Victorian era, especially, there's, you know, um, there's actually, like, uh, like, paranoia that's caused by, you know, some kind of disease, kind of like the Salem witch trials where, you know, people might have, you know, gotten, gotten chemically or whatever, they got something in their system that made them hallucinate and, and become really, really paranoid. And that factored into a lot of werewolf paranoia throughout history. And I think, you know, um, around the Victorian era that that kind of um, came to prominence again. I think I, I might have gotten the dates wrong, but either way, it's um, spooky. it's kind of like a re- recurring thing. So It's all spooky. This is how we should sum it up. It's just spooky. Yeah, it's spooky. Just a bunch of people being paranoid and thinking they're seeing werewolves in their roof. Well, yeah, that that sounds like a typical weekend for anyone in the woods in the middle of the night. Oh yeah. If, if I was chilling in the woods and some guy's dog ran off, I'd probably think it's a wolf after us. <laughs> um, I think I touched on it briefly, but zombies. We we got to mention zombies in Victorian London. You because... can go off on zombies all you want. I I want to hear. Well, the funny thing is, zombies in London. In syndicate could work as historical fact, grounded, and supernatural in three goals because people were buried alive. It's not uncommon. They did have bells on graves at some point, so if people were buried alive, they would ring a bell. So all it takes is somebody to die, be put in a shoddy grave, to not actually be dead, comes out the grave, and I was like, crap, he's a zombie. And they start. And Jacob or Evie has to go uncover the mystery of this guy, and they find out actually he never died. He yeah, he's asleep. like he's just this regular guy. Like he wakes up, and there's like like Jacob and Evie interrogating him, and he's like, "Oh, oh my god, I'm just a milkman." <laughs> just did, did milkman exist? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I I don't know, but you can't tell me it would not be common for someone to get so drunk at that time. <laughs> fall asleep in a street and someone to kick him and go, well, he's dead. Let's <laughs> bury him. He's... Especially with the Victorian medicine back then. Yeah, it's just like, like you know, kicking... practices are so bad. <laughs> just kicking him a few times, you know, the police officer, right, he's dead. I've kicked him ten times, he's not waking up, throw him in a shallow grave. And he just gets up about his business and, you know, just a local grave worker sees this, loses his mind, and you're like... <laughs> Wow! Yeah, he's like zombies. He's all like staggering and groaning and moaning and ugh, like that anyway. So it's like, oh, the dead are rising. No, he's just a hungover man who's been put in a grave. <laughs> Jacob's got to hang, like help him through his hangover later. Like, <laughs> like, like puking in a bucket, and Jacob's patting his back like, "There, there, it's okay. The nightmare's over." <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> This has left definitely turned into one of the coolest Halloween episodes, and there is a special reason I brought this up. And the special reason is the season pass for Valhalla is released. So Woo-hoo. we all know what's going on. And 
if you look very closely, um, we talk about the free content. And one of the last free content is fall 2021. And this means, if my theory is correct, Halloween is going to be in the Sausage Creed Valhalla. It has to be. It it has to be. I would love that so much. Oh well, or maybe like a um equivalent of Halloween. That would be probably more accurate. Um, it originated from Sam Hain, right? But I don't know if Sam Hain is like a Viking or dramatic tradition. But there's definitely you know pagan holidays that have their that later you know um contributed to the creation of Halloween, and I think that's probably what we're gonna see. Like um like not Od- Odyssey um. Valhalla was already going to say they're going to have a Yule festival. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it'd be something similar to that. Like, you know, it's like Christmas, but not. It's, you know, Christmas, but more authentic to this time and culture. I could really see Samhain, <clears throat> pardon me, because Samhain is a Gaelic festival, um, making the end of the harvest season and beginning of winter. So, really, in that time where there's a divide between Christianity, paganism, there's Vikings... A, a lot of people probably would still celebrate Samhain, and I really couldn't see it as a stretch of having a whole Samhain festival where we could see mythological spookiness, maybe the dead, ghosts, because yeah. a, a lot of the old mythology around Halloween is the veil between the humans and the spirits being weakest. We might get some ghosts. Mm-hmm. Maybe a Ghost Ezio just coming through the settlement. Maybe a ghost Altair. Yeah, what if it's like a uh, th- through the Valhalla settlement? Yes, just in the Assassin Bureau, you just have Ezio just chilling in a chair. <laughs> yeah, like um, I I was just about to say that like they 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 came in way later and like I I gotta be the buzzkill. But also like, what if it's like holographic projection? Like they're looking into the apple, but then they see. Or, you know, like, like Altair and Ezio, especially because they had position of the apple, they kind of saw, you know, projections of the past and they're just kind of walking through. So we see them as ghosts, but they're not actually ghosts. They're still there. They're... Yeah, yeah. Or maybe, you know, they saw it and, and you know, people thought, oh, ghosts. Ghosts with weird clothes. <laughs> it's probably just Altair in his little library writing some notes. Like, oh, Vikings. Oh, let's have a look. Ew, Vikings. Vikings. Like, oh. <laughs> they're just Vikings. They're just like, man. See through, scary, run. <laughs> yeah, um, that also brings up, um, like you reminded me of, you know, ghost Vikings, and that that reminded me of, you know, two beings in Norse mythology. I don't know if they're going to be in Valhalla or not. I know you encounter some ghost fighters, but um, not these specifically from what I have read. But I might have, you know, missed a lot. I don't have Twitter, so um, but there's, forgive me for mis mispronouncing any of this, but in Hirhar and um Draugr. and they're both kind of like revenant ish so the um uh, wait okay never mind never mind i com- okay maybe just the Draugr, because i completely mis misremembered in Herhar, so that's completely my bad in Herhar, in norse mythology are um like warriors who died in battle and go to valhalla and they're you know um they're taken to Valhalla by Valkyries and they get to just eat the fill and they're resurrected nightly. So, you know, they can just stab each other for fun and they resurrect all, all right. That but, does not sound very pleasant. I do not want to be eating some dinner and some dude to stab me, just for me to wake up in the morning and do it all no, they, again. They, they like it. That's what they live for. They're preparing for Ragnarok. Um, yeah, they're actually, you know, fighting on the side of the gods in the final battle. But then there's um the Draugr, which are more... Um, they're they're um, they're more zombieish. Actually, they're you know um, they're un they're undead, and they um, uh, they 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 can turn into mist. They can change their size. They can face through rocks, and um, they they often live within their gra- graves. And they bury and they guard buried treasure. And, um, but also they're animated corpses as a result of improper burial, like if you're not, um, buried in the right direction. Hmm. Yeah, so, and, yeah. Sorry, I was just gonna say, so that could explain why in one of the story trail in the very first trailer, why, um, Eivor gave one of the warriors his axe back. Mm-hmm. So, because if he didn't, he would have been, could have been resurrected as a Draugr. 
That's terrifying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know how, like, there's also an idea that I read one time before where it's because, you know, they were, they were, um, they, they weren't really allowed passage into the afterlife, I think, um, because of improper burial or because of something else. Like, you know, maybe they were dishonorable warriors or they were, um, or, you know, some other reason, but I'm just wondering about the possibility of, you know, droggers in Valhalla. I could see a droger in Valhalla being a really cool mission type where you and some of the settlement people all dress up as droggers to take back a fort from other Vikings, because really, if they know what a droger is, they're not going to really um, <clears throat> resist an attack from 10 or 20 draugas walking up a hill. They're going to run the other way. <laughs> yeah, they're really powerful. That's like, imagine just a whole Halloween mission where Vikings have took over a castle and they're not going to back down through normal warfare, so you just dress up as draugas and just walk up the hill like, yeah, we're the living dead. Can we have oh a castle God, back? That would be so <laughs> cool. This is like completely not halloween related but it's like that's that's a very very good strategy that i like to see in you know just stuff in general like um there's some um chinese military strategies in the three kingdom saga that use something kind of similar so um so it just kind of reminded me of that and i just think it's just a cool i i don't know if i would say trope but but it's just you know um like I, I like it when characters do that and fight smart, and that makes me happy. So when you when you you bring that up, it's like, man, I I didn't order Valhalla, but I I kind of want to if I could, you know if I could play it and experience that, that'd be very, yeah. Yeah, I want to experience this now. <clears throat> if it's not in, I'm not going to be impressed. But we have a long wait till fall 2021, so who knows what's going to happen? But we do have the Gaelic DLC, I'm going to nickname it, where we, um, the Druid DLC, where we see some Gaelic and some go ghosty looking people. That sounds spooky, but who knows what's in <coughs> Valhalla, because English is full of random mythology from the Black Hound of Death to unicorns, I think, you know, from the morbid <coughs> see a black dog, you're going to kick the bucket to a nice fluffy <laughs> unicorn. Yeah, um, about about the black shuck also i heard there was some like um a few accounts like i'm not british so i'm sorry if i'm stepping on british toes but i heard some accounts where they protect and you know guard women who are walking alone at night so i just thought that was kind of cool um a lot like a lot of stuff in british mythology and british folklore there is no it doesn't connect so some say if you see the black dog you're going to be in a terrible accident um some say if you see it you're going to die um, some say it's the devil himself in wolf form. <laughs> you know, yeah, English. Very, um... We just can't get folklore right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's mildly inconsistent, but I just thought that was interesting because I read about um the black shuck last year and I was like, oh, oh, they they guard women. Okay, like you know, sure they're an arbinger of death, but <laughs> they they respect women. <laughs> they respect women and they're an arbinger of death. I think any noble British man would just be like, yeah, you know what. I'm going to leave that woman alone. Let her enjoy her <laughs> evening, you know? Be more just, like Black Shuck. Yeah, you know, just the local drunkard seeing the woman, like, I'm going to go talk to her, and she sees the Black Shuck, like, you know what? Let her have a peaceful stroll around the lake. I'm not going to bother <laughs> her. I'm going to go home, you know, sip my beer, not by the fireplace, and let this young <laughs> woman enjoy her lake walk. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. Like, I'll be terrified. I'll be terrified if I just saw some woman walking down the streets from the shops and there's a black dog following her. I'm like, no. Nope. Black dog with like <sighs> red eye. Like red eyes or red dinner plate sized eye in the center of its head. I don't know. It's like, there's a different accounts of what the black shark looks like too, but Either I like way, the version where it's I'm just off. Cyclops. I'm just off. Big black dog that looks glowing. I'm off. <laughs> I'm nope, no hanging around for me. <laughs> So this is technically all we have time for tonight. Um, I know it's a bit on the silly side. We do usually stick to more grounded lore, but it's Halloween and I want to put a smile on everyone's faces. We have uh, 
the time of recording it is Wednesday, so we do have 13 days to Valhalla drops. I'm hoping we do get some Halloween-esque type DLC in the future. If not, we can only speculate about some of the stuff. Um, I really do think we might have a tangent with coconut crabs, but next year I'm dressing my child as coconut crab for Halloween. <laughs> Let's bring coconut crabs to Halloween, people. Um, I want to thank Trickster for joining, and I shall hopefully see you guys next week. Um, it was it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me on, and thank you for joining and being um, weird and talking about Halloween Assassin's Creed. Um, yeah, really. Not gonna get coconut crabs out of my mind, to be honest, or Dracula and Etsy. Or that's like, yeah, Castlevania style, but instead of them people, it's Ezio. Yeah, I'm, I'm going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Sounds fun. Uh, Sounds... Don't, don't let the coconut crabs take your candy this Halloween. <laughs> this is nightmare fuel. So... <laughs> Thank you all for listening, and I'll catch you all next week.